This week, we're looking at the Vector Ambient Delay by Aeon FX. Hey everybody, before we get to this week's video, as always, just a reminder to like and subscribe down below. So this week, we're looking at the Vector Ambient Delay by Aeon FX. This is a PT2399 delay style effects board. And if you're familiar with it, this is based around the Mad Professor Deep Blue Delay. Now with a lot of my builds, I usually just start with the effects board, but in this case, Aeon FX was kind enough to send me the full kit for the vector ambient delay. So I have all the components here, I'm gonna quickly run through them and then we'll get into the build. So first off is the enclosure. It's your standard 125B enclosure, a nice satin black finish. It's pre-drilled with you know top mounted jacks for your pots, for your foot switch. And then finally, it also has a silkscreen graphic on there for the vector ambient delay. Secondly, you're going to get two boards. Uh, the first board is going to be kind of your input or output board. Uh, this would be something that you could buy separately if you weren't buying the kit, if you just were buying, say, the effects board. But this one is for your input and output jack and your DC input. You also get your effects board, kind of your main effects board. You can see here too, it, it does separate. You have one here for the uh, three pull double throw switch. I'm sure current limiting resistors go on there as well. And then up above here is kind of your main effects board where your PT2399 chip is going to exist. You're also gonna get probably five or six bags of components with your kit. Um, we'll go over every component in it. We'll get into that a little bit more in the build, but just quickly, you know, you have a bag with your transistors and your chips, a bag with say your quarter inch jacks, your DC jacks. Uh, this one's got pots and your nice switch. This one's probably the most important, your resistors, your capacitors, all that fun stuff. I'm not sure if there's diodes in there. I'm guessing maybe it probably exists in there as well. And then lastly, one with the knobs for your pots. So again, I just wanna say that this is the kit. If you do want to populate it yourself with your own components, you can just buy the effects board or both effects boards if you feel like you want this kind of utility board as well for input output, uh, just something to keep in mind. So with that, I'm going to gather all these components up, take them down to the workbench, and we're gonna build out the vector ambient delay. Now I will say that Aeon FX does have great documentation on their builds. I will have that by my side. I'm also looking at doing some different camera angles, more of a top-down perspective for my builds. Hopefully this will give you guys just a little bit better perspective on putting one of these boards together. With that, let's head to the workbench. After I'm done, I'll bring it back up, plug it into the amp, and give you guys a demo. Okay, so we finally made it down to the workbench and we've got all of our uh, parts here from the Vector Ambient Delay build kit. Uh, just quickly, once again, over them, we've got our uh, ICs and our sockets. We got some caps here, uh, electrolytic caps, some knobs and our DC jack. We have our audio jacks. We have some wiring for the battery and then for connecting the different PCBs, LEDs and diodes. Up here we have our resistors, which I believe are called PRP resistors. And then we have our pots, our foot switch, and I guess our little bezel for our LED. Uh, maybe up here too, we have our enclosure. Also, of course, the most important thing are the two boards. So this is the input output supply board that comes with the kit. And this is our main effects board and our uh, a uh, uh, foot stomp uh, board here. Other than that, all I have for parts are some solder, needle nose pliers, some clippers. I also have my uh, soldering iron here as well. I'm sure there'll be some other stuff that we use along the way, but uh, for the most part, I think uh, this is good and we can get started. So off screen, I do have the PDF pulled up. Uh, first thing I need to do is break this board uh, I think the easiest way to do it is just against the edge of a table. I'm going to take it off screen and do it just because uh, I don't want to wreck this table here. So simple as that, just break that off. I can probably use my edge clippers to get these other little pieces off as well. And we're good to go. So now I guess we have three boards to look at. So the first thing we do when we're building out these effects boards is we want to start with the lowest uh, sitting components, which in most cases is going to be resistors, maybe your diodes as well. So we're going to start by populating this board and this board here with resistors. 
um, and we'll move along from there. So let's get started. Um, unfortunately with Aon, they don't give you the resistor values here. They just give you the numbered resistor. So you do need the documentation to look at it. Um, but in any case, what I'm gonna do is just grab my 10Ks, put them in and then try to get them in groups if, uh, if it can go a little bit faster. My soldering iron's all heated up, so let's go. Now it looks like I'm actually missing one of the resistors here. Uh, it's a 2K7 resistor for R10, I believe. Um, full disclosure, I don't know if that's something that got missed uh, in the package when it was sent, or if it's something that I lost. I know I've had some of the resistors out, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt here and say that's on me, but um, I'm gonna have to find my own 2K7, which shouldn't be an issue. So here's a, 2K7, just a carbon resistor. We're gonna throw that one in for R10. And I also did measure this. It came out to seven right on the dot, so not worried about tolerances here. Okay, so that is our resistors. I'm just gonna double check. And it looks like I've got them all. Three, one, one, two, two, one, one. Perfect. Okay, so that's our resistors. Uh, next, we're gonna move on to our diodes. So uh, first, we're going to do our 1N5817, which is a Shockey diode. So the diode actually goes on this board here. Easy enough, hopefully. Get them in there. And then we have our three millimeter green diode as well, which is going to go on the main board here. And I gotta find which side the cathode is. It's not very easy to see on the three millimeter ones. I guess I can just use the legs. Longer one is the anode. So what we're gonna do next is these guys here which are just our sockets. Uh, we actually have three of them. We're gonna use two of them for an eight pin chip and two of them for a, or sorry, one of them for a, two of them for a 16 pin chip and one of them for an eight pin chip. And I think I've shown this trick before on the channel, but essentially what we're gonna do is just tin the soldering iron and then get one leg of your socket down. It doesn't have to be anything crazy because we're gonna come back and get it. Just something to kind of hold it in place. Try 
Try not to burn yourself. That should be good. our other one as well. We have our sockets in now. I'm going to hold off installing the ICs next uh, just because uh, I don't like doing the ICs in the midst of still soldering in case you hit something with the iron. Uh, I know it says that's next in the in the documentation but I'm not going to go that way. Um, I think I'm going to say the same with the the um, transistor as well. And we're going to move on to the trimmer and the caps. We'll come back and get the transistor, at least before the electrolytic caps. So the trimmer. We can use our trick tinning trick here as well. Okay. And I guess I can snip off those legs. Let's get on to the capacitors. So I've got these WEMA capacitors here and I've got some ceramic capacitors as well. <clears throat> yep, and we're going to just uh, plug away at these. I think I'm going to start with the ceramics first. So now I'm going to put in my transistor. So what I do is I bend these out and then just give a little bit of a bend with my needle nose pliers. Some actually come packaged like this, but if I can get a focus on it, you can see. So kind of stepping back before we start putting in the, the other items here, we're going to just put in this. It's actually a regulator, not a transistor.
So we'll put in our wire headers now, which are these guys. Trying to see how they're going to go in. Yeah, I think that's the right direction. Actually, it's not. The board is actually fit for a directional plug, so I think we're good there. And my other one is going to go like this. Okay. And I'll solder those up. And now we'll do the few electrolytic capacitors. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and socket my chips now. So my P2399, I'm just kind of rolling the edges of these on the side of the table, make sure everything fits in. Oh, and I put that one in backwards. So now we need to do the foot switch PCB, finish that off. Now there's a way in the document that says how to do this. I'm just going to follow it. Um, we do have a three strand, a four strand, and another three strand that we need to need to wire up. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. And essentially what you want to do is just blue wires or blue part of the wires facing out, feed it down through and then feed the bare wires back up through and solder them from the top. This is just basically for strain relief, I'm guessing. Probably should know that if I would have read the manual, but I'm quick browsing it, so bear with me. Now we're going to finish off the build by populating out the input output PCB. So now we want to do our input output. So easiest way to do that, start with the 
jacks. The quarter inch jacks. Looks like one of the legs a little bent on it. And my other one. So now we have our three boards. Now we need to get into the enclosure. So let's take a quick look at these potentiometers. Uh, they're all 50K, I think. So we don't have to worry about which one goes where. Uh, one thing you should note is they come with these dust caps. I've already put them on two of them here. You can see the back. But all they do is you just uh, line them up and you'll actually hear them snap on. I don't know if the mic will pick it up, but there you go. So I'm just going to do this the way I like to do it. Just making sure that everything is kind of lined up. There's no little nubs on these either, so you don't have to cut them off. A lot of panel mount ones come with that little nub. You don't have to do it in this case, so let's uh, let's attach these pots to our effects board. Okay, that looks good. Those in there. Being very careful not to burn anything. Especially when we get in tight to this IC. Okay, so that guy should now fit in there perfectly. Excellent. So let's get some of these components in and we'll worry about lining everything up so they meet with height. First thing I'm gonna put in there is the bezel. We want to put our switch in there. We are going to need to pull this guy through just a little bit further. Just get him out of the way of the switch. So we're soldering in 
the foot stomp switch. That's just these nine items here. Okay, and we only have to put in the LED. But I want to kind of size this up to see where everything's going to sit. This guy goes in. That looks pretty even. And then this guy's going to go in like this, I believe. Need to kind of tighten up this. Area here. Oh yeah, everything's going to be clean. I'm trying to think about the easiest way to do this. So let's let's get our board in there first. So let's put our locking nuts on this guy here. So there should be three of those for the pots. We're going to put that guy through like that, and we're going to put our washers on for the pots. And then we'll put our nuts on. There. Okay, then what we want to do is get our LED in the right position here. I think they were using square pad as cathode. If I look up in the sheet, let me see here. Yeah, square pad is cathode. So short legged square pad. Like that. I'm going to drop this one in so I can kind of get the right distance. On the LED. It's a big LED. Okay. Pull it out. our nut on. We'll snug that one up. Like that. I forgot to cut off the leads for my LED, so we'll do that. Everything's coming together. We need to put our audio and DC input in here. So hopefully this just slides in. Spacer nuts on these, so let's do this just to try to bring it up to the same distance as the TC jack. Just 
see that there? It's not lining up perfect. I'm gonna just take it back out and see if I can figure out what's going on there. Might have to just massage it a little bit with the soldering iron. It's almost like it's not sitting flush. We'll give it another go. That's a much better fit. So now we just need to run the battery stuff down here. I probably will never use a battery with this, but it goes down there. We're gonna plug in our input and output runners. and then our power. There we go. So the cool thing about these boards is you can actually just remove everything from this. There's the front. We'll put on our dress nut for the foot stomp. This can just be finger tight. Like that. We'll give her a close up. This guy might just need to be Gently bent a little bit. These ones as well. So because this is so easy to take out, put back together, I don't have to desolder anything or unsolder, whatever the word is. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it together and give it a test. And if it works, it works. And if not, I guess I'll see uh, what I need to do, but uh, where it's so easy to go into troubleshooting mode, I'm not afraid of just testing it straight from the finished product. Not even going to bother with the sanity test here. Turn all my knobs down. These are set screw. So I need a little screwdriver. Looks good. See if I can zoom in on it a little bit for you. All right, I guess it's time to give it a shot. So we're back up from the workbench with our completed vector ambient delay. Uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about the build before we get into the demo, so let's do that just now. So build time for this guy was about an hour and 40 minutes. Mind you, some of that had to do with me actually trying to get the video of it. So I think kind of an experienced pedal builder might 
be a little bit over an hour with this guy. I would say maybe an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, pretty simple build, nothing too strenuous. Um, also the ability to kind of pull it out, put it back together, these uh, stranded connectors as well makes this just a really simple build, uh, even maybe for a beginner. Now I did have two issues with the build. One I did note in the uh, build video, which was with my diode. I had my diode seated incorrectly. So when I first came up to test this out and I turned the pedal on, um, my diode did not light up. Uh, secondly, and this maybe is uh, not so much an issue, but just something I noticed, uh, the input output board here actually is very, very close to the effects board when you have everything seated in here with the enclosure that's provided in the kit. Because of that, I had some solder gobs underneath my output jack that was grounding out on my effects board. So uh, obviously a little bit of a mistake on my part. I had to go in there and just clean those up, but I actually noticed it was still pretty close. So what I ended up doing was just putting some electrical tape on the bottom side of my effects board, or sorry, my input output board, just to make sure I wouldn't get any future grounding of my signal. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, this is my first build from Aeon FX. So I just wanted to give my quick comments on their boards and kind of what I think about it. First off is the use of the PRP resistors. I think these are supposed to be uh, a little bit better resistors than carbon or even metal resistors. Um, for me personally, I think they're really good for a beginner because it actually has the value written right on the resistor. Um, for someone who's a little bit more experienced like me, I actually like seeing the bands. So, um, you know, it's something that just was a little bit different for me. Also, I found the PRP resistor legs a little bit brittle. Um, you really had to pull them through the, the holes on the effects board to get them to sit flush to the effects board. Another thing I noted is this has great documentation, but I do think not having the actual values of the components on the effects board does slow down the build process. I found myself always having to reference back to the documentation to see where this 10K resistor went. It also meant I couldn't just grab all my 10Ks and put them in at once. I actually had to search through and say, okay, C1 is this, C2 is this, and it just made for a little bit longer of a process. I think if they were to put the actual component values right on the board, as well as the numbered uh, component, I think it would just speed up the process for people that are used to building pedals. Some other items that maybe are a little bit more positive is the inclusion of your battery connector. It's not something that I would use, but it's something that's usually left out of a lot of the DIY PCBs. So I really think that's a, a cool little inclusion and they actually make space for it at the bottom of the enclosure. So you can get a nine volt battery in there. Also, I like the ability that everything can be removed from the enclosure without um, basically having to desolder anything. Um, these cables make it very, very easy if you wanna test the pedal outside of the enclosure, which I actually did when I was having the issue with the output jack. Now, before we get into the demo, I just wanna call out the four controls on the vector ambient delay, one of which is internal, which is this trimmer pot here. Uh, this basically allows you to set kind of the maximum amount of feedback that can be uh, attained through the external feedback knob. I'm gonna have mine set at about 80%. If you do set it to 100%, you could potentially put in self oscillation. That's not something I'm looking to do, so we're gonna keep it at 80% for the demo. And then lastly, the three controls on the outside are pretty common on any delay pedal. You have your feedback, which is essentially your repeats or number of repeats. As you turn that up, you're gonna get more repeats in your delay signal. Your delay, which is just your delay time. And then obviously your mix as well, which is a mix of the wet and dry signal. Your wet being your delay signal and your dry being the signal in from your guitar. So with all that, I think we're ready to do a demo of the Vector Ambient Delay by Aeon FX.
Well, that's it for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that build and demo of the Vector Ambient Delay by Aeon FX. It's a really cool analog delay pedal. Um, I enjoyed it a lot, and I think that's, that's it for this week, guys. Um, remember to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.